Um, Fred is a personal acquaintance of mine who lives out in Idaho and happens to be in Wisconsin this week. And he's experienced the eco-terrorism acts out in Idaho, which predated what we've seen here in Wisconsin by a couple decades. And I just thought he could lend um, uh, some perspective on what has happened out in the western, western states. Mr. Grant, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, uh, I started representing ranchers and farmers and private landowners uh, in the mid-80s uh, when there was uh, a real effort to stop. This was before the spotted owl became uh, really a shutdown of all of the logging in the Pacific Northwest. And at that time, uh, Earth First began uh, what the FBI and other people picked up on as a, as a uh, title of eco-terrorism. Uh, by driving uh, iron spikes into trees uh, so that loggers using their chainsaws would hit those spikes, causing damage to them, causing serious injuries. One of the worst of the injuries was George Alexander in 1984, uh, working for Louisiana Pacific. He suffered, uh, the jugular was, uh, was uh, severed, uh, his face was cut uh, terribly, uh, he was in critical condition for a long time because he hit a spike. Earth First uh, took credit for it uh, publicly. Dave Foreman uh, later said uh, that it probably wasn't one of theirs because, not because they didn't use spikes, but because it wasn't in the kind of tree that they would have wanted to protect. Uh, in his memoirs in 1991, he defended the use of spikes, saying that safety is a relative issue. Uh, and the safety to the trees was more important than the safety of individuals. Uh, Mr. Foreman of Earth First uh, printed and published a 370-page manual for uh, describing the types of weapons that could be used uh, against loggers uh, to prevent the cutting of trees. Uh, they, uh, they included booby traps. They included the use of the iron spikes. They included pipe bombs. Uh, the FBI at one point uh, in the Department of Justice indicted 11 members of his organization for various types of eco-terrorism. Uh, finally, they, th those acts stopped um, after uh, several Forest Service offices and departments were damaged by attacks because the Forest Service was still trying to do their job under the National Forest Management Act of managing timber and managing sales. Um, they didn't stop until, and, and during that time, the Forest Service began actively uh, arming their rangers so that the rangers could carry weapons. One of the problems in the Pacific Northwest uh, is that cell service is in some areas virtually non-existent, uh, as in Idaho, where 10 miles out of town there is no communication with anyone uh, from law enforcement or anyone else. Um, I've often said that a person in, in Key West could talk to someone in Maine, but 10 miles outside Boise, Idaho, you're out of contact with, with everyone. Um, the eco-terrorism uh, stopped with the forest, basically, when the spotted owl became listed and all of the timber sales shut down. Uh, shifted, though, to the, to the rangelands in 1991, uh, Secretary Babbitt promised that all the cows would be off the public lands by 1993. The effort began to shut down livestock grazing in all the public rangelands in the 11 western states. And in Idaho, for example, uh, there were uh, groups that began to cut barbed wire fences uh, which contained the cattle herds so that cattle would, uh, would get out, uh, trespassing on other allotments, causing actions to be brought against the rancher, uh, causing the threat to lose their permits. Gates were left open. Uh, fences were cut and people went in with four wheelers and uh, dragging uh, weights behind them, wrecking pastures that raised the crop to feed the cattle during the wintertime, uh, causing uh, Idaho, for example, uh, to pass an act in 1998, making it a misdemeanor to interfere by damaging fences, gates, um, water troughs, and any other improvement on a ranging, uh, on, on, on the range, on an allotment or private land, and thus interfering with the grazing preference. 
uh, what was done with water was uh, either poisoning the water troughs or putting something in it that fouled them to the point that made the cows sick. But in addition to that, uh, really killed off a good part of the wildlife because in those western states, the only water the wildlife can get is the water troughs that the ranchers collect in the spring to leave through the summer. Uh, our rivers are a joke compared to your rivers. Uh, many of them you can step across uh, at the end of July. Um, I thought I, I, uh, that I would offer those things. Uh, Pennsylvania passed a statute in 2006. Uh, ours was passed in Idaho in 1998. There's been one incident of an arrest under that statute. A sheriff was able to, because it had been made a misdemeanor, he was able to use the investigative techniques of the State uh, Criminal Investigation Division. They found the people, arrested them, and since that time and the publicity that came from it, there have been no, more, no other incidents uh, that have been damaging to people or to property. Senator, Mr. Chairman, that's basically my testimony. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Uh, do we have any questions from the members? Any questions from the members? Um, with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your testimony. Oh, just one quick, I guess one quick question here is, um, so once Pennsylvania had a law in place and they showed that they would enforce that law, that um, uh, some of these activities no longer happened, is that correct? That's my understanding. I know that's true in Idaho. Uh, when, the, when the sheriff uh, made it clear that he was going to enforce it, the Criminal Investigation Division and the Attorney General's Office made it clear they were going to follow up, and a judge made it clear that he was going to apply the law, uh, then, then they stopped. The protesters still continued, uh, and uh, uh, the Western Watershed's uh, leader uh, is deadly opposed to uh, grazing, uh, and he's made the statement publicly to the newspapers that he intends to drive the ranchers out of business by costing them money.